So for this presentation, I'm using a pre-recorded screencast to give you an overview of the user interface. And here is a simple example uh, with 15 images taken taken from a cheap smartphone camera. Uh, we can see that the image are properly recognized uh, with the green icon. Uh, if uh, we don't have the metadata at all, the icon will be red. If we have metadata but the image is not known in the sensor database, the icon will be orange. In that case, you can edit the sensor database, which is a simple text file. So here we can see the result of the sparse reconstruction. Uh, so Meshroom managed to get uh, all the camera reconstructed, and uh, we get uh, 25,000 3D points. We can also see those 3D points uh, on the input images. There are three status. So feature point extracted in 2D, in blue here. Um, then we can toggle the button to see the landmarks, so the red uh, in red. And uh, we can also see the position of the 2D features and the corresponding reprojection of the 3D landmark. And the segment in between is the reprojection error. And finally, uh, we can see uh, in orange uh, the points that were matched to other images uh, but could not be reconstructed in 3D at the end. Uh, now we open the final result. Um, it's a 3D uh, textured model. Uh, we can click in the 3D viewer on the I button to toggle the visualization. We can use the control key uh, to uh, focus directly on a single layer, as in Photoshop. And the same shortcut works on the double click on the graph nodes. The viewer provides the uh, option to visualize the geometry, the wireframe, the textured version, as well as uh, color-coded uh, normals. If we want to have a look uh, in detail at the intermediate steps, uh, we can directly visualize the estimation of the depth maps. So in the 2D viewer with a color-coded representation, uh, but we can also load it in 3D to see the information provided by this input image. So usually the final result is too dense for direct usage. Uh, most of the time, people are doing some manual topology of the mesh uh, in ZBrush, for instance. Uh, here, we are making a simple decimation so we will create a decimation node. The default value of the decimation is uh, two. Uh, as we can see, the design of the graph editor has changed a lot to improve uh, visualization of the nodes and the connection uh, between them. Also, during the computation, uh, the nodes that are being used are locked, and we can continue to edit the graph. Uh, uh, we can also see when the nodes have the duplicated status with this icon, and when we change the value, the status changes. And now, while this decimation is computing, we are creating a new texturing node, connect to it, and launch a computation, and it is accumulated in the render queue. Now we can just look at the result of the um, different uh, decimation level. So the original uh, mesh with a full density, and then the version uh, decimated by a factor of two, and the version decimated by a factor of 10. So while this texturing is computing, I just want to show you also a note to uh, upload your result on Sketchfab. Uh, so you enter the, your API token from your account, and you connect the data you want to upload. And then when you will compute the node, it will upload the data to Sketchfab. When we have computed our uh, final texture on the low resolution mesh, we can uh, see that we keep the visual quality on the lighter model, uh, which is more convenient for uh, later use. Uh, 